uh, we have with us today Janet Nolan, who is the CEO of one of the most effective and strategic nonprofit organizations in the nation. Based here in Ontario, Christian Horizons is an organization that helps people with developmental disabilities, and they do it at a grand and effective scale with uh, thousands that they serve here in Ontario and multiply tens of thousands that they serve globally. Uh, Janet leads an organization that has literally thousands of employees as well as multiplied thousands of clients and she is a dynamic leader and she's my friend and Janet I'm just so glad to see you again thanks for for being with us today it's lovely to be here John so I think we're approaching the 50th anniversary of Christian Horizons Absolutely. and in that uh, story 25 years of those uh, of those years involve you <laughs> you started out in a in a, just kind of an entry-level position part-time I think uh, 25 years ago and then three years ago they had the wisdom to make you their chief executive officer congratulations to you how's it going uh, wonderful John it's been an incredible journey uh, I never uh, dreamt that God had this plan for me when I entered into the doors of Christian Horizons in Ottawa 25 years ago um, and I'm just grateful to serve and to be a part of this wonderful ministry. It's so, phenomenal. So what do you do? What have you been doing and what are you doing now? You know what, John? Uh, Christian Horizons believes that God created all people in His image and uh, that all people are intrinsically valued by God. Um, unfortunately, people with disabilities are often left out, uh, often left out of community, out of church, out of uh, economic opportunity. And Christian Horizons exists to mobilize government, to mobilize the business community, to mobilize churches, to mobilize the public at large so that people with exceptional needs belong to communities in which their God-given gifts are valued and respected. Last week we had uh, Randy Lewis on the program and I had the joy of interviewing him here on, on, on 100 Hundley Street and uh, he is the retired executive vice president of Walgreens. It's a name you recognize, not just Walgreens or Randy, because he has been extremely uh, involved, as we talked about on the program, of trying to get people with disabilities into the workplace and treating them the same as everyone else, expecting the same uh, outcomes of their work, and as well, um, uh, paying them the same. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful environment. He has a slogan that uh, uh, it, it, we're all us and, and on his, in his warehouses with 8,000 employees where they work, they have, a, you know, they have the word them and then the red circle and a red line through it. There is no them, it's all us. Uh, you are in the same way as he has been doing in corporate America, you're doing across Canada through, uh, as you said, government, through businesses. You've been also bringing awareness through churches and if I remember correctly, the organization was founded 50 years ago because there wasn't a lot of church ministry or care for those that had disabilities. Absolutely, John. Uh, 50 years ago, uh, there were uh, the government was looking to how people with disabilities would be supported in communities across Ontario and across Canada. And the birth of the community living mo movement uh, was uh, what happened. And, uh, you know, Jim and Adrian Reese, our founders, uh, they looked around. Their son, Stephen, was born with a developmental disability. And they saw community a little bit differently. They, certainly community could be geography. Uh, they also believed that community could be a, a, a place of faith, a community of faith that could reach out to people and provide services and supports uh, within a Christian environment to people with disabilities. And that was the, the beginning of Christian Rise. And certainly we started very modestly with a, a small camp. Uh, and we've actually grown to be the largest service provider in Ontario. Um, we have 3,400 incredible staff members that uh, serve on our behalf every day. You can't do it without the team. Oh my goodness, they are phenomenal. Um, but it's more than that. Uh, Christian Horizons, certainly we, we strive to be an excellent service provider. We desire to uh, provide programs and services that are relevant and current and, and create opportunities for people with dis disabilities in their communities. But we also see as an, our, uh, our responsibility is to be a, a bridge builder. We believe that government has a role to provide uh, funding and services so that people with exceptional needs have the right uh, housing and, and, and opportunities for learning uh, in, in their communities. Right now there's more than 20,000 people waiting for services. We're excited that the government oh, is... is, say, is say, say that again, there are In Ontario there are about 20,000 people waiting. waiting for services. Oh my. Uh, go the government in uh, the proposed budget has just announced a, a huge increase in funding and, and we're thrilled with the role the government is playing. 
but it's more than the government's responsibility. Uh, we believe that there's a great business case for people to hire people with disabilities. Walgreens is a phenomenal exper uh, example of and, that. And Randy Lewis told me that there are Canadian companies, pretty whole high-profile companies, uh, Tim Hortons. Brand, brands in this country that are beloved, mm -hmm. that are engaged in, in changing their approach to, uh, to, to people with disabilities and hiring. It just makes good business sense. People with disabilities make great employees, and uh, I believe that the inclusion of people with disabilities in whatever group, that you're, whether it's a school or a, a business environment or a, a church community, people with disabilities have something to contribute. contribute. <clears throat> Janet, when people talk about um, community transformation, they'll talk about uh, the influencers in the society, the institutions like education schools. You mentioned government. We, 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 we are media here and, and, and have influence and, and through other outlets, this program and others. But you also have, for people of faith, uh, houses of faith that are influences in communities. And somehow you folks have beautifully through the decades been able to navigate through some partnerships. And as a result, you are, are bringing about transformation as an organization. You know, there's a, there's a really amazing story growing uh, within the Christian uh, faith community uh, in churches right across this country. Um, I think uh, churches are, are at a place where they're recognizing people as dis with disabilities as, as uh, equal members of their, of their congregations. And they're taking steps to, uh, to include uh, people with disabilities in all of the activities, not as, a, as, a, as recipients of charity, but as, as, as members, as citizens, as, as people that belong to that body of faith. Uh, next week, we actually have a, a pastor's conference uh, at Harvest uh, Church just down the road from here, sure. Harvest Bible Chapel. Um, and uh, it's called Communities of Belonging, and it's a, it's a conference for pastors and church leaders. You're sponsoring it? Mm-hmm. We'd love for people to come. If you check out our website, certainly there's information. Uh, I think we have some spaces left. It's filling up quickly, uh, but it's, a, it's a, just a day-long conference, and it's uh, three incredible speakers that are going to help shape church leaders' perspectives and, and give them ideas and, and generate conversation. This is, this is so important because oftentimes, I was, I was a pastor for many years, and, and, and I, I was in an era of pastoring uh, in, the, in the 80s and in, in the 90s when we just really didn't know how to approach, we didn't know how to start. Yeah. And I remember being in those days and, uh, and, and being in some conferences and sending staff to conferences like that. So you're providing people with encouragement, you're providing them in this conference strategies, I would imagine some resources. Absolutely, opportunities for training that we could do uh, with churches. You know, I had a meeting with um, the Meeting House uh, recently, uh, Ron Burk Burkholder, yeah. and he said, you know, we, we're really keen. We really want to do, uh, you know, take the next step yeah. and include, but, you know, I, I can imagine that it's, there's a lot of work to do. And I said, you know what, Ron, there's not. It's simple. Uh, it's not a, a gigantic mountain to climb. People with disabilities belong to communities. We just need to, to figure out what are some of the things that we can do to equip people so that they ask the right questions and create the right scenarios and the right uh, um, places where, where families and people with disabilities are just people. And it so echoes the, the message of our Savior. Absolutely. You know, the, the, the kindness, the caring, the consideration, the touch of people that are hurting and wounded and struggling, and uh, people that are oftentimes discounted or marginalized by a larger society and, and to our shame. Yeah. But to see uh, Citadel churches like Harvest and, uh, and Meeting House uh, in, in our province and to know that there are other Citadel churches, leader churches that are across the country, kind of set the tone. Absolutely. It's just phenomenal to hear. You know, I uh, recently spoke with a, a, a person who uh, had done some teaching uh, in one of the Christian schools. And he grew up in the Christian school environment. And he said, you know, we had a, a graduating class that were filled with a couple of characters that could have been a real challenging class and people still to this day years and years later talk about that class and how caring they were and how uh, incredible they were and, and what leaders they, they graduated as. And he said, you know, I attribute it to the fact that there was a, a, a girl, a student with Down syndrome in our class and it created wow. opportunities for everybody to just be more considerate, to reach out, to maybe yeah. uh, uh, think about how they behaved, hold a door and it gave them an opportunity to be their best. Yeah. And uh, he said, it's, it's when all people are included, yeah. we all are better. Yeah, the, uh, being, it, it causes you to be others focused. And uh, we're so grateful for opportunities to share about Christian Horizons. Um, you've got some other events, I think, that are happening that are in alignment with your 50th uh, anniversary. Tell us uh, about what's ahead, and we'll put the website there again for people to get more information. Fantastic. Yeah, we're, 
we're excited about next year being our 50th. It's a big year for us, yeah, for sure. And we're hoping to fill it with all sorts of activities. And this year we're doing a, a little bit of a lead up. Uh, Brian Dirksen is uh, going to be um, uh, ha having a few concerts for us in, in partnership with the Friendship Ministries. Um, in addition to that, we've got uh, a big kickoff uh, at the end of November, uh, honoring the International Day of, Dis of Persons with Disabilities. Uh, Justin Hines is going to um, have a big concert for us. So we're pretty excited about that. And there'll be all sorts of more activities uh, on our website over the next year. And if people want to get involved and find out what's happening with Christian Horizons, maybe in their, uh, in their postal code, yeah. uh, they can uh, go online and, and, and learn more. Absolutely. Very quickly, we've got to wind this up, but overseas, this is another interview for another time, but overseas, you're, 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 you're touching over 50,000 lives. Directly and hundreds of thousands indirectly. <sighs> Uh, certainly we see people with exceptional needs, uh, not just here in Canada. Uh, Jim Reese said uh, several years ago that our ministry was never created uh, just to serve people in Ontario, uh, that his vision was to, to reach out to the world. And we right now are working directly in seven countries, seven, seven developing countries. Uh, we have children's programs, we work in partnership with church and with government. And we've been able to do kind of what you described here in Ontario, we've been able to uh, uh, bring what we've learned here uh, to a developing community. And to be honest, I look forward to that next interview because what we've learned in developing communities, we need to bring back here to Canada. Uh, this is so good. Uh, we're going to continue this conversation on Crossroads 360 and it'll be available to you very soon. And I hope that you'll check it out. And I want you to come back and be our guest <laughs> again and again. I always enjoy seeing you. You're a great leader and lead a wonderful organization. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Christian. And thank you, Christian Horizons, for all you're doing.